Can I tell you guys what I just saw? Yeah. I asked Andrew to turn back around because I thought I'd seen the figure down there. I don't know what it actually looks like, but I thought I'd seen it. Is there anybody down there? So what the hell is it? I, I honestly don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I have no idea what the hell that thing is. But it looks like a shadow figure. This room over here always smelled like death. I brought a medium in here. Mm -hmm. We went to the door and she put her hand on the door and she walked in and fell to the floor. That's one thing that has not happened to me since I've started investigating. Anytime you can see like a cross, uh -huh. is I haven't seen someone in another window, but 100% if that were to happen. My brother saw the little boy on the tricycle. He come down this hallway in his tricycle and he went right through this balcony down here. I had a friend whose grandfather was a security guard at night at the hotel and he would come home and tell about seeing the couple that were dancing in the ballroom in, in their clothing and everything. Up on the third floor you have this very strong female presence, Elizabeth. She sits here and she, she's upset because something happened. People have claimed to have seen her and I have no doubt that what they saw was true. When you have a location like the Hotel Conyon, you have over a hundred years of history stories that can be told, the experiences that were had there. Something feels different about the Conneaut Hotel, and I can't explain what it is. I feel like all of these things are pointing to some of these legends having some validity to them. My name is Scott McCafferty, and I'm a mental health professional by day and a paranormal investigator by night. Over the past 11 years, I've been learning to take the skill set of helping others and apply it to my ongoing investigations into the paranormal. With an assortment of friends and family, I am on a mission to contact the echoes of history and potentially solve the mysteries they left behind. You're gonna make me say it out loud, aren't you? Oh, you prick. My name is Scott McCafferty, and I have been a paranormal investigator for 20 years. Oh, I'll just twist that dagger more and more into the fact that I'm old. When people hear them a paranormal investigator, in my experience, you usually get one of two responses. The first one is kind of like that snooty, the, oh, I didn't realize I was smarter than you. Kind of like that, that arrogant attitude, like, oh, only stupid people would believe in this kind of stuff. And then you meet the second type of people who either have a paranormal experience they can't wait to tell you about, or they've heard about a place that's supposedly incredibly haunted that they can't wait to tell you all about. This is actually how I came to hear about the Hotel Conneaut in Conneaut Lake, Pennsylvania. Hi guys, my name's Rex Tracy. I started ghost hunting roughly 10 years ago. Hotel Conneaut for me was a very special investigation. Reason being is I grew up around the park. I went to the haunted attraction they have there every year. So seeing the hotel and actually getting to go in it a few times really got me excited because you hear these local legends. And that's part of the reason I really love ghost hunting is getting to go explore these legends. Now you remember I'm um, to look 20 years younger and 100 pounds thinner. They told me they could go back 19 years, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Jane Smith, I'm treasurer of the Crying Lake Area Historical Society. We were founded in 1999, and we preserve our area history through pictures, through deeds, through our different artifacts that people have donated to us. Our goal is to preserve our history for future generations so they might know what all we did here. I love the hotel history, and to be truthful with you, even though my grandmother worked there and I grew up a block from it, I didn't know any history. I didn't care about it. Uh, but it has a very rich history. You would, you would swim at the beach every day and you would have to walk home and right past it and you would smell the bakery and, and see all the people. And it was just, it was a beautiful hotel. It still is a beautiful hotel. They, they had proms there, they have weddings there, they have every little thing you'd want to think of. When you have a location like the Hotel Conneaut, you have over a hundred years of history. You know, for me, that's amazing. The stories that can be told, the experiences that were had there. 
I mean, at one point, this whole park was called Pennsylvania's Perfect Playground. You need to imagine like, the music venue that was there that could have thousands of people, the carnival games, the rides, the other hotels, the balls that were had in the ballroom. So much positive energy and just so much awesome history. The hotel was first built in 1893 by the Exposition Park Company. At the time, Conneaut Lake was a growing tourist attraction. In fact, it was so successful that by 1903, the company rebuilt the hotel to make it more luxurious and much bigger to accommodate all the guests that were coming to the area. Mm -hmm. and the hotel was that way, 150 feet originally. This part of the hotel, you had, would have had a drugstore here. The staircase went all the way downstairs, and then there would have been 14 hotel rooms. The doorway would have been right here. Mm -hmm. and over here was a music parlor and then a writing parlor. This is a wing right here, and there was actually two more of these wings this size going out the back. And mm -hmm. that was the hotel was actually extended all the way over, and then mm -hmm. you had three more wings out the back. And you could actually see right here on the blueprints. This section right here is 1892 part. It actually was called Floral Hall. It sat right over here. They brought it over here in 1892. In 1903, they built a new hotel in front of it. In 1925, they built this section right here. On a paranormal investigation, our goal is threefold. Number one, we want to try to figure out, is there something actually here? The second goal is, if there is something here, what is it? And the third goal is, now that if we know that something's there and we know what it is, why is it here? So now to try to find those answers, we're going to try to dig a little bit deeper into the supposed hauntings that are happening in this location. The Hotel Conneaut has a lot of stories, but one of the ones that stuck out to me the most is on the third floor, there's a very strong female presence. Her name's Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the spirit that has been seen wearing a wedding gown who supposedly roams around on the third floor. Now on April 29th, 1943, lightning struck the hotel and lit the building on fire. And supposedly as the story goes that Elizabeth was staying at this hotel with her husband at the time. The husband got trapped and died in the fire while Elizabeth escaped. So her spirit has been seen in the hotel mourning the loss of her significant other. So one thing that we did when we were at the Historical Society is we looked for records of an Elizabeth. Elizabeth was not in the fire. There was nobody in the hotel at the time. However, people have claimed to have seen her, and I have no doubt that what they saw was true. I do not know of anything personally where it came from. Uh, we know some of the people that were fighting the fire in 1943, and there was nobody there. It was in April, and the hotel was not open in April. So where, where the legend came from, I have, I do not know. She sits here and she, she's upset because something happened, and, um, she won't she she won't tell anybody and she's not looking for her husband she's looking for a child we did a lot of research on elizabeth and she's from jamestown pa and she's a real woman and she actually uh her husband came here from an online ball in 1931 they read in room 321 something happened to their child in, in 321's bathroom major d told told her that day or that night sat her down in the chair in the, in the corner right there. So she's either in a blue or yellow dress because she was here for the alumni ball. She was the first of 500 women to attend Allegheny College. The second most popular legend is that of the little boy. My brother saw the little boy on the tricycle. And my brother just said he saw a little boy on a tricycle and then he immediately left. <laughs> so Michael, he come down this hallway in his tricycle and he went right through this balcony down here. I mean, sorry, the stairwell, in the stairwell, he went over this one right here. Okay, wow. This room over here always smelled like death. And for years it did. And I, I cleaned the carpets, you couldn't get it out. Well, I figured out what it was. It was, I brought a medium in here. Mm -hmm. We went to the door, she put her hand on the door, and she walked in and fell on the floor. But she said this, she, uh, this bed, this where it happened at, and that's the window right there. That, that, she, that the housekeeper was in looking over this way. I'd shit if I seen, like, somebody over there, you know what I mean? That's one thing that has not happened to me since I've started investigating. Anytime you can see, like, a cross, uh -huh. is I haven't seen someone in another window, but 100% if that were to happen. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Down in the pool room, it's said to be that there's a little shadow that darts across the floor and runs about like children playing. You also get EVPs, spirit box hits. This would have been a very active room during the hotel's, you know, rise in popularity and when it was at its height. 
Um, I've seen it before. Other people have seen him. I've seen this man, I've seen this kid get right down into the floor. I had a friend whose grandfather was a security guard at night at the hotel, and he would come home and tell about seeing the couple that were dancing in the ballroom in, in their clothing and everything. Another legend is that there was a butcher that chased people with his clever I have not heard anybody that knew about that one. When Rex and I started putting our plan together for how we wanted to approach this investigation, one of the first things he and I agreed on is that this location was a little big for just the two of us. And there's activity happening all over the place. So more than likely we we're gonna end up running around all over the building all night and we weren't really gonna have time to dedicate to really digging in deep to figure out which of these legends are true. So the first thing we did is reached out to Andrew, who you guys have met in previous sessions before, who has done excellent camera work for us and is a very seasoned investigator. Hi, my name is Andrew Hull. I'm a ghost hunter. I've been ghost hunting since 2017, so somewhere around six years now. What really got me into ghost hunting was me and my buddy Rex started ghost hunting at the Madison Seminary and ever since then it's been a passion of mine and I can't really get over it now. But Rex also recommended that because of the nature of Elizabeth and what we knew about Elizabeth before we got to the hotel is that she's a woman who is in mourning and very upset. With an all-male team at the building that might be off-putting for her and that might kind of prevent her from coming out and speaking to us. So a friend of mine Sam actually that I met through working at the haunted attraction had heard that we were gonna go on this ghost hunt and she was super excited and you know, was asking if she could come along. So we decided to bring her out. She showed interest in the paranormal and for someone who's never been on a ghost hunt, she was very knowledgeable and it was actually pretty nice to have along. I am Sam, I'm a friend of Andrew and Rex's. So I'm not necessarily a ghost hunter of any rights. Um, I overheard Rex and Andrew talking about how they were gonna set up an interview for coming here at the hotel and doing some investigating, so I kind of nosied my way in and was like, hey, can I come with you? That seems like something that would be fun to do. And they're like, yeah, sure, we'll ask and see what's going on. So I came along and they graciously allowed me to experience it with me. All right, so we are going to start off with a Marco Polo session. This is where we walk around the building and just ask Marco Polo and see if anyone wants to respond. If you're here, you can definitely talk through this device. We're going to play some Marco Polo. I think you should be familiar with that one. Do you know which floor we're going to go to? No one's voice, we're going to make it out. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard hallway. Hallway, yeah. We started our first patrol tonight, heading up to the third floor, doing a Marco Polo session. Marco Polo sessions are one of my favorite activities to do when on a ghost hunt, and almost always you get some pretty cool responses. Marco. That was weird. Oh, what was that? He used a temperature gauge. It's twice. Yeah, it's temperature gauge. So it's basically saying it's getting colder. So what the lady said earlier was at the end of the hall. What is the door for just a second? Anybody up here want to talk to this? See if you touch anything up all day. This is the hallway that they said that. Recently, uh, they would see the little uh, little boy holding hands with the shadow figure, and the shadow figure would be over. Go back. Go back where? Over on the right side of the wall over here. Oh my goodness! And the child would be center, and you would just see the silhouette. Can you say that again, please? Trouble. Can I tell you guys what I just saw? Yeah. I asked Andrew to turn back around because I thought I'd seen what I had assumed to be the figure down there. I don't know what it actually looks like, but I thought I'd seen it. Is there anybody down there? Did you say uh huh? Can you tell us who you are? What's your name? It's Elizabeth. Open. Is that what it said? I can't, I heard it two times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, if that's you, not to be rude, but can you say your name one more time just to confirm it's you? Elizabeth, can you tell us what happened to your son? Baby. Baby? baby. I heard baby too. Baby. 
What happened to your baby? It died. It died. It died. I'm sorry to hear that, Elizabeth. Can you tell me how your baby died? Bathtub. Bathroom, bathtub. Yeah. Your baby died in the bathtub? Hey, Elizabeth, we would like to come down and offer prayers for your son if it's with your permission or for your baby. Can you tell us which room that he passed away in? Is there anything we can do to help? I think he just said no. No. Well, I'll tell you what. I know there's probably not a whole lot we can do to help you, but we are very good listeners. And sometimes just kind of sharing how you feel can make you feel a little better. So if you want to talk, we'll listen. Hi. Hi. I heard you. Um, can you introduce yourself? Oh. Are you seeing something, Andrew? I think I am. Were you seeing something that's coming out of like the right side of the hall? I am seeing something straight down the middle, like a shadow yeah. figure. Andrew, when I'm moving, it's not no. Causing like anything you're moving right now, and it's still there. I'm gonna see the head in that top pit. Oh, and then an arm down the side. Well, I just right. The, yeah, it looks like it's peeking out from the the yeah. bottom left. It looks like that entire figure there, right? I'm going down here. On the third floor of the hotel, I was running the camera while they were playing Marco and Polo. And I looked down the hall and I saw a shadow on the camera. I wasn't sure exactly what it was. It was a dark shadow, kind of about somewhere around six foot. And I just kind of stopped and was staring. And I, I was looking at it for a while, waiting, waiting for it to move, waiting for something else to move, looking at it, the camera, looking up down in the hallway. And I couldn't see the shadow. With my own eyes, I could only see it through the camera. Oh, holy okay. shit. I can see the head. Yeah, you can see the head and look down here. Well, like the arm or a hand. Well, here, give me. Where's the flashlight? I do. Like, that's not one of us, or any of us projecting. Right. And that, right. top, <laughs> that top shadow keeps moving, like, side to side. I took a lot of still photos from this section of video that you're watching right now. And I took these, these section of photos, I think it was 15 photos in total from different points of time during this section of video. And I put them up on our social media and I put them up on our Patreon and I showed friends and family members. And I said, tell me what it is you see, because I'm not sure what I see. And overwhelmingly people saw the shape of a head, the shoulders and the upper torso of a figure standing in this doorway. Another section of people, not quite as big as the first, but a good a good amount, say or think that they believe that at the bottom of the door, if you look carefully, you can see the bottom part of a woman's dress. Oh. Walk. 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 Yeah. I can't express to you guys enough how strange it is to look on a camera and catch a shadow silhouette. And then you look down the hall and there's nothing there. You look back at the camera, silhouette. Look back, there's nothing there. So, in true Rex fashion, I get sent down the hall and I start marching down there to go see what this is. I check the next camera, same thing, you can kind of see the shadow silhouette. But now that I'm closer, I'm like, oh, there's gotta 100% be something there. I can't see it with my eyes. So I go straight up to the door and I like, start shining my light on it to see if there's paint, scratches, or something on this door causing this silhouette. It, nothing. It's strange. I mean, I could definitely see how like people would walk in and see that as a shadow figure. Okay. Yes. I was confused quite a few times as to what I was going to say. Is there something in the door? No. So I checked that other camera. I stopped to see if I could see it on there. Mm -hmm. Couldn't see it on the close one. And I went up to the door and if this is the door, I shined it up on top. Yeah, the shadow was still there. Because I wanted to check and see if it was like paint. And at first I could see like a circle here, like a head. And I looked down to see like if there was a body, looked back up, dark spot that was here was now gone. That's interesting. It's not paint on the door because I checked yeah. the doors all so, one machine. Yeah, let me it go could down. be an optical illusion maybe? It could be. Yeah, it's kind of where I'm. 
I do understand the urge to not want to stay if you're seeing and feeling those things, if you're <clears> not already privy to the information of what I can do. Well, at the same time, people that would have been seeing that would be seeing it with all the lights on. Is it still on? We're seeing it in the dark. <laughs> He said, this is my floor. No. <laughs> yep. Hey, you chose it. What? Cool. Right about Here's here. It. There's kind of a dark spot in the middle of the door, but that doesn't look like a purse. No. Like, from we'll, we your last, earlier. We'll intermittently move a little closer and, and try again. Yeah. It's interesting. Because like nothing right now. Yeah, no, it looks like it went away. Like, I don't... Even okay. if you come up to the door... Oh, jeez. There's... Oh, wow. What? Like, back there, it looks like there's different parts of the door. I mean, all it could be, like, there's dirt on the door. But when I came yeah. down here earlier, right here, when I first got here, mm -hmm. there was very clearly... I've never heard one of those like be so big. concise and mm -hmm. clear. At the and then I looked down to see if there's a body. I looked back up and cool. <clears throat> the spot was gone. Weird. I don't know what this figure is. What I can tell you for sure is that there is no imprint of a person in that door. That door is a solid gray color. It's not a reflection because we are all the way across the building on the other side of the hallway and the floor slants down like this. So if I'm standing right here and the floor slants down right here, my shadow is not going to project all the way down that hallway to the same level as I would if I were standing right in front of it. So it's not anybody's reflection. So what the hell is it? I, I honestly don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I have no idea what the hell that thing is. But it looks like a shadow figure. I can tell you it wasn't there later in the night when we went back and tried to refilm it. And Rex and I went back three weeks later to try to debunk this thing. We spent about two hours trying to debunk it, and we were unsuccessful in doing that. And by the way, that video that we took of trying to debunk it will be available on our Patreon for anybody who's interested in seeing that. But as of right now, I don't have an explanation for what the hell that thing is. This is why we need to get a second camera so we can split up, put two people at this end, two people at the other end, and see what happens. Because mm -hmm. I think bigger groups are going to be intimidating. Well, I can go sit down by the creepy shadow door in front of the static camera. I'll come with you. Yeah, I'll split up. So after we see the shadow figure, we split into smaller groups to see if maybe we can catch something on audio. Me and Sam go down by the shadow figure, you know, near that door where we caught that, and we're running EVP, which is short for electronic voice phenomena. You just take a digital recorder, run the audio, and see if you catch anything. Starting EVP, starting EVP. Third floor, Hotel Conneaut. Sam and Rex by the shadow door. So this device I have here on the ground will help us hear you. Do you think you could walk up and say hello to us? And while we're running the EVP, I hear what sounds like a music box or like a jewelry box start to play a little lullaby. It only played a couple notes. And I look at Sam. And I go, you know, did you hear that? And she's like, yeah. Well, Sam has a hard time hearing. So the fact that she heard that, I heard it, was already pretty interesting. And then when we play it back, you can hear it clear as day. Now, mind you, nobody's staying in this wing of the hotel. Nobody's staying in the wing below us. So where did that music box come from? Did you guys at any point hear a music box? No. Mm -mm. Okay. So that eliminates it being the groundskeeper. He was up here though. Yeah, but the, my yeah. theory for the um, sound could have been like a text notification. notification. But you guys didn't hear it for equal to each part. Yeah, check this out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Shit. I heard yeah. that. Yeah. That's, Yo, whoa. That's we weird. heard it in person, though, yeah. like, too. And I even go, enough. did you just hear that music? Yeah. That okay. was like 
That okay, sounds like, so that sounds like a jewelry box. So it could yeah. be something, but we also or have to realize type of thing. Mm -hmm. We also have to realize there's other people in this building mm -hmm. who are very interested in what we're doing, so we can't rule out the fact that somebody yeah. could have been doing something downstairs. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But that was but like, that's a damn cool catch. That's a cool catch. Yeah. I mean, that was very loud for it to be on a well, different floor, right? We'll you be should, be, should be filming us while we're talking about this. Yeah. We'll be able to know because the static camera's right there, too. But I mean, like, that was very... It was, we definitely didn't hear it yeah. down here. Mm -mm. Because like Sam said, we're about equal distance. So if it would have been the... Yep. And that's not, that's not you close to you. It. Well, that's what I said. It almost sounds like it was to the room of the right of me, but let's listen to this. That way the camera's seeing it too. It's like a lullaby. Do, do, do. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we were rolling on EVP down here. We didn't get anything. That's that's cool catch. Hey, real quick, did you guys happen to be playing any kind of music or hear any kind of like music box or anything going off? Recently? Probably within the last 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Because we just recorded on one of our recorders what sounds like a lullaby. Do, do, do. Like hmm. really. Yeah, no, not oh, really. Not, I mean, we've been sitting here for probably yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. See, when I went inside, you were sitting out here. I didn't. You didn't hear anything? No. Cool. No? <laughs> All right, so far we can't rule, we can't explain why that is, but it's it's loud and clear. It gets very loud on this. It's going to go off here. It's coming. Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard it. Pretty clear. Yeah. So right now we have no, no, what we, we, don't, yeah. we don't know what caused it. Hmm. And that's not even anybody. I mean, like, yeah. I know your ringtone just because I hear it. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not even anything that I. And that's, I mean, it's a, clearly a lullaby. Yeah. Right. Do, do, do. Yeah. After we finished on the third floor, we decided to go back down to our base camp to figure out what our next move was going to be. Meanwhile, the static camera we'd left in room 321-323, which also used to be Elizabeth's room where her baby allegedly drowned, was recording some very interesting hits throughout the night. So basically what we're doing is we're doing an experiment. So right here, this is the paranormal music box. And basically what it works is, is if anything walks in front of it, it's going to light up and it's going to start playing music. So the reason we put it across from Boo Buddy is because Boo Buddy will also make notifications if something touches him or interacts with him. So the goal is if we can get one of them going off, maybe we can get both of them to go off. This is interesting. Okay. So the goal is, is hopefully we can get the spirit to get both of them going off together. All right, hold on, Rex, before you do that, because I'm about to set off the... Mm -hmm. This is the four of us at Hotel Conneaut. It's a little after 1230. We're down in the pool room. I'm going to put this next to Boo Buddy. So that way, if anything wants to tell you a secret... So sweet, no one wants to touch your tummy right now. God, you sound like me in the prom. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to... Did he get cold in here? No, it's just creepier. <laughs> what did he say? Did, did he get, get cold in here? here? Alright, so Blue Bear's picking up a temperature shift. Yeah, that's twice. And then I'm going to give everyone a big thumbs up when I'm good in... Uh, I mean, it's silly, but I don't know if it's... Yeah, but I don't feel like you're moving. That light just went off. That light right in the corner. Mm -hmm. Just went out? No, it just went on. It just turned on. Can you tell me? What do you want us to tell you? Are you the one who turned that light out over there? Did you make it cold in here? 
That's three times. Yeah. Are you playing with Boo Bear? Andrew. Oh. Ooh. Say hi, Andrew. Hi. What's your name? Boo. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Look. Do you know what time it is? Ceiling. What about my it? voice? Did it get cold dreaming? There's four. Are you still playing with Pooh Bear? I'm here. <laughs> Interesting. Just give him a little poke. Or tickle him. Just bump him. Rex over. I want to go home. How old are you? During my Estes, I was getting a lot of voices like bombarding me, talking really fast over top of each other. And even for someone who's experienced like myself, that was starting to get like overwhelming because they were just kind of screaming at me, talking, a lot of prevalent voices with really strong accents and I could definitely like feel their emotions coming through. I didn't make it. <clears throat> Where are you coming from? Mm, I love cookies. What's your favorite food? Perfect. Thanks for making it cooler. What, sick? So normally Blue Bear has a period of time in between his questions, usually like a couple, like a minute or so. So if he starts talking rapidly, that means something's interacting with him. If he... If he what? Sticks his nose... I'll fucking cut him. Okay. I prefer you didn't. Look... <clears throat> so at me. me. Very demanding. Tell us where you're standing and we'll look at you. I just suddenly got really overwhelmed. I think it's over there. I feel it over here. I don't feel anything yet. It got to be overwhelming at a few different points because down in the pool room it was very active and I just got completely overwhelmed, like started tearing up, choking up, just couldn't calm myself down and whatever was trying to communicate with him and what they were talking about just like overflowed into me and it was just a very shocking experience to say none the least. I'm alive. If you're alive, then move that uh, music box. But not really. You're going to have to do something to prove you're here. Right now... Actually, if you touch Boo Buddy, he'll let us know if you touched him. I, I know this is going to sound weird, but I just got like a visual of a man pointing. So one thing that, that caught me off guard, and I've like I've seen like light shift in front of my face during an SS session, which could just be my eyes like adjusting or like if someone shined a flashlight. But to see a figure appear while A, you have a blindfold on, and a lot of times like when I'm trying to focus during those, I'll close my eyes. Do you see a figure almost like a painting? you know, in front of you, caught me off guard. It like, I was like, whoa. And I'm sitting there looking at this bellboy is the best way I can describe it. Like, take like your picturesque bellboy from like a movie or a book or a TV show, you know, the button shirt and just kind of standing there. But to have him point and like his arm moved, it wasn't like a, I just got this flash from him and it all happened kind of slow. Caught me off guard because okay now he's gone i pointed to where he was pointing in the room it, it's so strange i i can't describe it because now i'm sitting there doing the rest of the cestus and i'm like holy crap is you know this am i going to see this guy again what was i pointing to it just, so i'm standing over here in the corner where he said he was standing and in this corner right here you can definitely feel it's cold but i'm outside it's fine now where are you? I'm where you told me to go. 
Not saying we're outside. I mean, that's the light that's going on in office is the one that's out here. I don't think you're here still. Like, I, don't, uh, I will if you give me a reason to. Wait, stay. So the one that's asking to leave is a male. The one that wants us to stay is female from the sounds of it. I, mean, I have he, more to say. Well, we're listening. Female. What do you have to say? We're here to listen. Any last message you want to give Rex before we pull him out? Hear that? That's me. Oh, I didn't like that voice. That was a creepy fucking male voice. All right. Ten more seconds and we're pulling him out. Ten. Touch. Nine. Duh. Eight. Scar. Seven. You can touch me if you want. One. One. Get her, Ray. All right. We're taking him out. I'll give you I'll give you a thumbs up when I'm ready. Okay. That was a thumbs up. You must be told. What must we be told? Hey, I'm here. What's your name? I told you already. Sit down. Why do That's I have me. To, why do I have to sit down? It's cold, man. It is cold. Cold. Are you trying to trying to cuddle, no, it isn't. cuddle for warmth? I told you everything. What you told me earlier? I know all of your names. Female voice. Let's hear them. Andrew. Hey. Scott. It's two. Rex. Three. And you. And you. Come on, that's kind of rude, guys. <laughs> it's not like people applauding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. You didn't say my name. Have you been following us? Tell me who you are. You should know her name. I know your name. What's my name? Let's hear it. Would you like to hear me? Yes. yes. Yes, absolutely. Can you tell me what book I'm holding? Maybe. Mm -hmm. a pretty good answer. I don't have that ability. Oh, okay. Is there any way that we can make it easier to communicate with you? Make sure it was one What's of her name? 50-50 type of things. You know her name. Fuck it. It's nothing. Woman's voice. Wow. <laughs> What's your name? You never gave it to us. Um, I've been wanting to open the door Patience. for a minute. Patience. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh. 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 Jeez. I don't think they like me. <laughs> I'm trying. I believe you. Okay. <laughs> Do you not like Sam? Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. I died. Oh. How did you die? This is your chance to. This is our chance to? To die. That's what I figured. At the end. 
Jeez. And you'll be okay. Oh. oh, fuck that. Look at the plastic. Whenever he was talking, the plastic was like moving, like someone was putting their hand on it. Oh, I was seeing that earlier too. It was just the wind. Yeah. I don't know, the one time it looked like just the middle of it. Like He's a traveler. So the importance of watching your footage back, guys, I cannot express enough. During Scott's Estes, I'm looking out this window and I kept seeing something kind of move. So I go, hey, Andrew, you know, come over here. And we're looking out this window and we kind of start going through a couple possibilities debunking it. Could be the plastic moving, a sheen over the, you know, window, a light, wind, you know, quite literally anything. So we're going back over the footage and you can see clear as day, this translucent whitish figure go past the window. Not even on the one with the plastic. So when we go back, we're trying to debunk this and we have no success. So guys, that is why it is always, always important to watch your footage back, even if you didn't think you caught anything. So my first thought when I saw this video playing it back, you know, that's probably a reflection of somebody walking around outside. But then I look at my notes because whenever I go through footage, I'm always keeping track of notes and what time, you know, everything's at and what we're doing. So that way I can kind of compare between the various cameras. And the one thing I noticed is it was around 2.30 in the morning when this was recorded. So who would be walking around outside when it's extremely cold out and rainy at 2.30 in the morning? So we went outside and we walked around and we tried to see if we could recreate it and we weren't able to recreate it. Then we remembered Key's story about the woman who supposedly died of a heart attack in the building. She was seen by one of the staff people from this side of the building looking across the courtyard and through the neighboring window to see this woman die. Now, was this the same window as that woman died in? No. But the phenomena of seeing something from across the way, that is in common with the story that we know. So was this a spirit walking through the room? Now, I can't say for certain whatever this is is 100% paranormal, but what I can tell you is that every attempt that we made to try to debunk it was unsuccessful. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's about 3.15 in the morning right now, and Rex, myself, and Sam, our newbie, are down here in the ballroom, and we are getting ready to do a trigger experiment. Um, basically, what a trigger experiment is, is we are going to try to simulate music, and we're in a ballroom, so we're going to do some dancing, some really horrible, horrible fat guy dancing, so don't mock us too much. Um, and the reason why is because the spirits in here are said to actually be dancing. There have been couples that have been seen dancing on this floor that people see and then they just disappear uh, and also some EVPs. So we're going to see if we can trigger that and make that happen. All right. With our royalty free music. I can see the comments now on YouTube. Wow, Scott, you guys don't take ghost hunting seriously. You guys need to pull your heads out of your butts. Blah, 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 blah. Because God forbid you have a little bit of fun on a freaking ghost hunt. Look, the stories in the ballroom is that a phantom couple is often seen dancing to music in the center of the ballroom and nobody else is there. So we were trying a trigger experiment to play a little bit of music to get the energy and get the, the lightheartedness because if you're dancing in a ballroom, then more than likely the reason why you're still there, assuming you're not a residual haunting, is because that was a really enjoyable moment for you. You got to remember that as much as the hotel has some real tragedy that allegedly happened, so too does they have a lot of moments that were incredibly happy to people. This was the place where they had weddings, they had proms, they had gatherings. Like this, this was an area of the building that would have been full of energy and excitement. So if you get reported phantoms dancing around, it's probably safe to assume that that was a very enjoyable moment for the two people that are dancing there. So what better way to try to create that situation than to have a little bit of lighthearted fun in a freaking ballroom? All right, go ahead and pause it. All right, silence, we'll see if that. Any requests for songs?
You want to come out and dance with us? All right, plane recorder one. Is my shoe squealing? That, yeah, that. Was that yours? Yeah, it was me. Okay. Sorry, I should have been. No, no, it's fine. Nothing on mine. All right, watch your eyes. That's pretty good to me. So first, guys, I would like to apologize for my terrible, terrible display of dancing. I do not have moves. The Ghost Disco Party was excellent. Um, but in all seriousness, it did have a purpose. That's the ballroom, so we're trying to, you know, stir something up. We figured playing some music, having lights going might, you know, elicit a response. When you have such a place that has really powerful memories attached to them. If you can kind of do something to trigger those memories or recreate a scene, that could cause some level of activity to occur. <laughs> and now you've got to take that. <laughs> I job. thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is making for a good video. That was worth it. Can't take life too seriously, we'll never get out alive. My final thoughts on the Hotel Tanya, guys, this was an awesome location. And this is, you know, just goes to show when you have people at a location like Keith, who love the building and are excited to share the history with it, it makes our job so much easier and just that much better. I would absolutely love to return to this location. It has so much to offer. I feel like there's something missing from this investigation that really we're only scratching the surface of whatever is going on here. I feel like all of these things are pointing to some of these legends having some validity to them. And I think, in my personal opinion, we got enough to prove that there is something here, but I don't feel like we got anywhere near enough on what is it and why is it here. And I've said this before in previous sessions, you know, those are reasons that we always want to go back to the location. But something feels different about the Conneaut Hotel, and I can't explain what it is. And I told Rex, I'm like, I really think we need to come back, and we need to come back sooner rather than later. So don't be surprised if in the very near future you see Conneaut Lake Part 2. <laughs> <laughs>